The Labour Party and the People's Democratic Party, PDP, have called for the outright cancellation of the governorship election in Imo State over irregularities that they allege marred the election. At a press conference in Owerri, the Imo State capital, the governorship candidate of the Labour Party, Arthur Nachonu, and his PDP counterpart, Samuel Ayanwa, said that the election was below standard and a dent in the integrity of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Meanwhile, the APC chairman in Imo State, Mark Donald Eberi, described the election as free, fair and credible and called on other political parties to close ranks, accept the outcome of the election and support Governor Hope Uzodinma of the All Progressives Congress APC to develop the state in the next four years. Well, joining us this morning is Honorable Tony Chinedu Wulu. He is the Labour Party Deputy Governorship Candidate in Imo State. Thank you for joining us, sir. All right, um, would appreciate it if we uh, if you can um, uh, turn on. The... Thank you. Good oh, morning. Great, great, great. All right. Uh, so let's go straight into it. First of all, I mean, it was a hectic weekend, uh, especially for all political parties engaging in the off cycle elections. And then the results trickled in. But yet your party says they will not accept that result. What are some of the key reasons why your party says this? Uh, since we have you here, you might want to shed more light on it. Okay. Well, what happened over the weekend is anything but elections, right? We, for if you had your reporters on ground, I'm sure they would also uh, allude to these facts. One, we we had all manner of players. You know, I, I used to think uh, before now. We were suffering, uh, we, we used to suffer from uh, political talks, uh, election day talks, right? Those that come around and do all manner of things. But this time it wasn't like that. What we saw was the police and the military. And the funny thing about it is that we are also aware that most of those people wearing those uniforms are not men of the uh, Nigerian police and the military, you know, because I mean, we all know how their uniforms usually are, but this time, most of the majority of them were wearing new uniforms. So we know that those were possibly political talks that, that they sold uniforms for. You know, we had, we had all manner of cases. It, it has never been like this before. I've participated in several elections. It's never been like this before. We had Bivas uh, results upload uh, access was restricted. The beavers wasn't being used. Our agents were bad, bad, completely bad from the collection centers, you know. We had fake results. In fact, as a matter of fact, we had elections ongoing in some polling units, and their results sheets were already uploaded to the IREP. You know, we we had we had people, politicians moving about with the same our personal carriers. In fact, one of them blocked the, the PDP, the uh, deputy governor's residence. You know, they cordoned it off, led by, led by uh, some of the agents of the go government. You know, we had all manner of things. We, we, have all, we had all manner of things. Okay, we... so if I hear you correctly, you're saying that um, the summary of it would be that uh, law enforcement agents had a role to play, and uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission also. Would you say that INEC failed in most state? Uh, as a matter of fact, the, the current INEC, led by Mobud uh, Yakubu, should be very ashamed of themselves, including the national chairman. Before this election, we asked the national chairman to remove the state's president electoral commissioner. He played deaf ears, which, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, and without any form of precaution, the, the, the man is highly, is highly uh, compromised. And I mean, what he is, what he is leading Nigeria to, I'm, I'm not sure he will be able to, to, I'm not sure he will be able to, to bear with what's about to come because next election circles, by the time he sends people out there, he's obviously sending his, his people to go and get killed. Because, I mean, he's setting a very negative precedent. We've had other national 
chairman, but he's, I don't know what INEC has become under him. INEC has become very transactional, very commercialized. I'm telling you about agents that we are aware of how much they were paid. Some were even caught with the money. And you could see them doing so many things in the field. And this, this INEC, INEC staff were escorted, escorted. But, I mean, they were also provided security with the police and the army to do what they wanted to do. It's so shameful that even capturing them on camera, you will see them behaving like, I mean, common criminals that were caught. Those, those were the kind of persons that were deployed to come and man our election. So I'm only wondering what would happen in the next election cycle, because I mean, most of them may not survive it. Now they are setting this negative trend that could lead to a revolution in this country. How do you want to believe an election body, an election empire, that you know from beginning is already rigged not to favor you? So, I mean, you go there and slog it out with whoever you see in the field. You're not going to give them any breathing space. You know, no. we believe that the election was going to count. We believe that, for once, the massive number of security agencies we saw Deploy the, the massive deployment. We thought this uh, well. They deceived. They deceived us. So when you say you that know, you were they, deceived, they that when you say that were. you were deceived, are you inferring that those deployments were fake uh, law enforcement agents? Because you did say at some point that they were new uniforms, and that from that you could tell that they were not. You know, or do you have sub subsequent evidence to show that these people were actually not policemen? They're not law enforcement agents. If they are policemen, then if they are Nigerian police and Nigerian army, that makes it worse. Because I mean, all what they did over this over, over this Saturday was protect protect uh, uh, APC and INEC to do other things they did. I mean, they wouldn't allow other party agents to get to the coalition. They cordoned it off. You have military men there, you know. Waving their rifles, waving their rifles, you know, nobody, nobody could get close to the collection center, you know. And in most cases, you actually had them help in 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 cutting away the the ballot boxes, you know. I mean, I mean, yeah, there was nothing with this. And in 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 a bit to do all of what they did, you could see the results that came out, you know, in a bit to do what they did. They, they gave the Labour Party, which was already pre-planned, you know, because, I mean, Labour Party won the election. But because they, they are afraid that they don't even want to make us uh, the second in the race, they had to. I mean, these were already written. All the results for Imo State were already written, you know. They gave us 64,000, gave PDP 71,000. But add up everything. Add up all the figures that 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 would that would be funny because in two thousand in two thousand INEX says um, there were about four hundred and eighty thousand accredited voters for that election. So four hundred and eighty thousand were accredited to vote, but the number the total number of votes that came in for that election was seven hundred and eleven thousand. So how come four hundred and eighty? Thousand that were accredited turned in a vote of 48. That's the question we're now asking them. I mean, they need to ask, ask us this because I mean, from the from what uh, APC APC uh, they, they scored themselves 540,362. Okay. So they are leaving 470,686 mm. for votes, all the other parties, PDP, Labour, um, uh, APGA, AA, including voided votes. But and so we are questioning, how did 480,000 persons get accredited for the election and then votes of about 711,000 get stunned in? So in a, in a bid to write write fake results, they I mean still they overstole. Now we're asking them to come and explain where the SS came in from and what it eventually means is if you had seven hundred and eleven thousand, 
and FEC had 540,000. It means other people didn't participate because the actual number of accredited voters were 480,000. Okay. So you have so 480,000 voted. That means no other person voted in that election except APC. That's called 540,000, more than the number of the accredited voters. Is that mm -hmm. not funny? Well, um, honourable, honourable, but well, you have at least um, seven days. Let's let's ask first. Have you turned in your petition um, to INEC? Has that been done? Yes, our lawyers are dealing with that at the moment. Okay. We're, we're, right. we're not just we're not just done with that. We had a whole lot of violence. In fact, in my presence, one of the police persons shut up, and an old woman of about eight something or ninety years slumped. They didn't shoot her, but you know, these are aged mothers. You know, she was scared. I mean, we, we, we started dealing with trying to resuscitate an old woman because of scare. And you do all of this as a sitting governor. Why do you have to go through all of this if you were actually, I mean, uh, popular? Okay, the let's talk about the sitting governor for a bit. And um, I want to talk about him for a bit because of the charter of equity or the alleged charter of equity in Imo State, which of course was um, established to ensure the rotation of gubernatorial seats among the local government areas. Now, we know that uh, Olu has been in charge for the longest time and they're looking to see that Oweri and Okigwe also have a fair share and a, a, you know, an equitable chance at governorship. Now, some would argue, like one of our guests whom we had yesterday, that uh, Hope Uzodima coming back into power for the second term was a no-brainer because of the Charter of Equity. And that this, of course, gives him the opportunity to be able to, you know, do the work, that complete the work that he has, quote-unquote, started in his first term. Is it a position that you agree with? Complete which work before we even get to the Charter of Equity? Complete which work? Complete the work that all the roads out of the 306 wards you have in Imo states, none has any government presence. Complete which work? Complete the fact that the only thing, the only sector that is thriving in Imo states is insecurity. Mm -hmm. Businesses are shut down. Businesses are going off. Unemployment is the, is the highest in Imo states. You know, the, the thing is, when, when uh, this is a governor that only visits Imo State, he's a visiting governor. He doesn't even stay here. He's most of he's in Abuja. So uh, that's why I, told, I said in another channel that every project Hopo Zodema says he has done only exists in his brain. None of them is a reality. And I, I, I mean, like they say, I urge you to come and do your private investigation. And most times I laugh at him because I feel that the things you see in Abuja, the things probably he goes around, drives through my tama before he gets to his house. He sees the good roads and he believes he's in Nemo State, forgetting that he's still in, a, in FCT. So most of the things he sees, the bridges. In his mind, he thinks he's working, but nothing. There's nothing to show for the four years. And that is why he, he, he's ready to do everything, everything, compromise whoever, compromise the authorities, deploy all manner of human beings just to secure a second tenure. That he knows that Imo people will not give him freely. Now, coming to your question about the uh, Charter of Equity, what is equity? He that must go to equity must go with clean hands. Olo has been there for the longest time. You want to do another four years. Okigwe's tenure was truncated after uh, 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 Hakim's one term. You, you still, I mean, you, if you want to really talk about equity, you shouldn't even contest. If you want to talk about equity, you wouldn't have gone to, I mean, from number four, you went and lobbied your way through the Supreme Court and number four became the first, which is one of those magics we've seen in our judiciary today. And then that, that got you back to back after Richards had finished eight years. You came back again. And because you now want the support of another zone, you started dangling the kite of... He, he is not equitable himself. I mean, he, he shouldn't even be in the race. And the truth about it is that nobody voted for him right from 2019 till now. And the same thing repeated itself here. You know, even with the whole money that they brought out, a, a pooling unit had over 800 and something thousand. This is for the same man that beat up Joe Ajero for coming to 
protest non-payment of worker salaries and pensions. This is the same man that if you calculate how much they brought out for this election, that people still rejected. Some collected their money and still voted against them. If the actual results come out, you see that Labour trusts them across board. With all the things he spent, in fact, he couldn't even believe anybody anymore. He made himself the DG of his campaign because he knew that everybody he was giving money was going to fail him. That was why he had to import all manner of uniform-wearing persons to come and help him loot and carry the ballot buses. If Obosa Demba wants to test his popularity, if truly he thinks he has performed, if he thinks that the people are with him, let the Nigeria police, let the INEC, let every other person involved in this be neutral. Let us see if Obosa will get a fraction of any vote. Even his own wife probably will vote against him. Okay, because okay, he knows um, what kind um, of husband um, he um, has um, at home. Honorable, well, we don't know about uh, his own wife voting against him at this point. But um, as we wrap up this conversation, let's 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 chart a course for the way forward. Um, do you believe in the judicial system if it warrants that you have to go to court? Because what we've seen in this dispensation or this period rather is go to court if you're aggrieved. Go to court. So you're willing to go to court after the seven days has, has expired. Uh, should it be well, that uh, your, your case uh, has no validity in court? We will. We will. We will continue. You know, we're Nigerians, we're resilient. It's not because we, we all trust the judiciary anymore. I mean, even, mm -hmm. even, a, even a, a child born yesterday, if he can talk, if he or she can talk, will first tell you he doesn't like the judiciary, you know. Uh, he doesn't trust the judiciary. And that is why it's become a, a regular term, go to court. You know, people find it quite easy and convenient. I mean, if we should go by what we're already expecting. You know, my principal would always say he still, he still believes in the judiciary. Huh? But for me, I don't. On the contrary, I, I don't share that view and believe with him because, I mean, I have seen, I've seen all manner of, all manner of judgments. I've seen the judiciary state one president, the same judge, the same judge that states one thing, comes back again and also repudiates what he has just said and states another thing. So, I mean, I've seen all manner of jokes coming out as pronouncements coming out from our... And, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, was it yesterday there about one of, one of his supporters told me that we should not bother going to court. After all, Hope has, I mean, over the years, he's been servicing and doing a whole lot of things, help these people became son, help them become judges, and all whatnot. If we should look at all of that, then it, it will be discouraging. But since they continue to call themselves the, uh, the last option of the common man, or whatever they choose to call themselves, we will continue to exploit that until it becomes very clear, until it becomes very clear in that we should, we should, nobody should have anything to do with the courts again. And we're hoping that they don't take this country to that point where, just like INEC has proven. But you, you see, are they building confidence in these institutions? I mean, those occupiers. No, they are not. They are clearly not. Because, right. I mean, in the mind of the average man, now he's thinking, why should I go to vote after all? So is this helping our democracy really? Is, it, is this helping deepen our democracy? Yeah. When people begin to feel, well, my vote will not count. And when people feel like that, the next is for the political actors to get into action and say, okay, since the people don't even believe and nobody believes, let me take my fate into my hands. So on that day, you, you may be seeing stray bullets hitting mm -hmm. different persons that yeah. call themselves because that's where they are driving this country to. Mm -hmm. And that is what we're trying to advance. We don't, we don't hope for that, to be honest. Um, but then again, um, we, don't, we don't hope for that. To, to, to get, to get Nobody that wishes for it to happen, but that's yeah. the truth. Because if you see what has happened, what happened over the weekend, let me tell you, you will find out that the same people that played the script in Imo were the same people that played the script in Kogi. If well, you look at the, the figures, it clearly shows that, oh, okay, they're, they're almost within the same region of 700, 700. Thousand. The only place that had a, a little semblance, or a semblance really, of an election that happened was was in Bayasa. In, in this state, in states, yeah, we we've run out of time. Says, 
Yeah, we run out of time, Honorable Mulu. We'd certainly, I mean, you've painted a bigger picture as to an underlying similarity between these irregularities in these different states. And we hope that we can have you back, join us to maybe expand further on that topic. But we thank you so much for joining us. We do wish the <coughs> Labour Party all the best. And at the end of the day, like we'd always say, let justice prevail and may the best man win. Currently, Hope Uzodima has been declared return elected. But you know, if the Labour Party goes to court, we do hope that you know the, the judges can decide with the well, fact. They have seven them. days. Right. No, they seven have days. seven days to upturn that and change that status. Right. And that is what we're expecting Yakubu Momo to do. All right. So let's see how that turns out. And we look forward to having you join us again. Thank you.